Ajan, thank you for coming and join us. Selamat datang Bapak dari Malaysia, Pak. Terima kasih sudah hadir. Selamat siang, Bu. Thank you very much. Sama-sama. <laughs> Bu Zurnila, ya. Oke. Okay. Good afternoon, Pak Izir. Pak Izir. And all colleagues, everybody. <laughs> Good afternoon, Pak Firdaus, and also Ajang Firasak. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me to join this important meeting. Okay, he's here. Yeah. Thank you, Ajan, for always support us here in Banda Aceh. <laughs> to restart, Pak Izir, this is... Okay, I think we can start, yeah. Maybe the committee first. They will announce something, please. Silakan panitia, ada yang mau disampaikan atau di share? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam Good afternoon. Welcome to international webinar with them the global impact of coronavirus a socio-economic perspective with data. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, I will explain the rules of this webinar. First, please turn on your camera. Two, make sure your, your microphone is turned off. Three, audience should put the name of the university or institute after their name. Four, all the audience can post question in the chat box function in the Zoom and YouTube platform. And last, the four moderator will choose the suitable question for Q&A session. After this, there will be an interesting door prize. Now, we return things to seminar's moderator, Mr. Hijir Sofian. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the MC for today webinar. Uh, as already mentioned, that today webinar, the theme is the global impact of coronavirus, a socio-economic perspective with data. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon for everybody who already coming here together with our screens. First of all, I would like to thank the committee of this webinar who worked very hard to make this event happen. As a first rector of the university, we are very proud of our statistic students who have successfully conducted this event. This event actually consists of several activities, namely infographic competition, data science competition, online training of Python software, national seminar, and also right now is international webinar. And also, Ajan Firasak, 
Pak Firdaus and Bu Yati, this happen was already officially opened this morning by our rector, Professor Samsu Riza. And I would like to thank also all the speakers, Professor Firasakdi Chong Sufi Fatwong, and Ibu Yati Kurniati, and also Pak Firdaus Dahlan, and all of the participants. This webinar consists of three international speakers. And for the first, it will be Professor Dr. Firasakdi, and then continue by Bu Yati, and the third, the last, is Pak Firdaus Dahlan. This seminar, uh, all the presenters will give about 20 or 25 minutes and then continue to the question and answer. For the participant who raise the question, there will be also door prize from the committee. So that uh, this be, yeah, Remind, yeah, that at the end of this seminar, webinar, later on, there are five door prize to be uh, give to the yeah the lucky uh, participant who raised the questions. Okay, first, I would like to introduce Professor Fira Sakdi. I met him very long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. Professor Firasakdi has been a medical professor at the Faculty of Medicine, Prince of Songkla University since 1982. He created great contribution to the foundation of medical study in Southern Thailand. He set up the epidemiology unit and has been involved in a number of national and international agencies, including the World Health Organization, WHO, where he often served as the temporary consultant throughout his academic career. Professor Firasakdi also established Institute of Research and Development for Health of Southern Thailand in 2004 for solving and improve and improving health and well-being of people in South by developing and increasing human resources in public health to work in local communities across Southern Thailand. The main focus of this institute is to take a part in healing the people, especially affected from the violence and conflicts in deep South of Thailand. And it will be mayor Let's men also for the PSU or Princeton Kla University graduate volunteers. Professor Firasakdi also involved in founding other organizations related to the Deep Sort Healing, such as Deep Sort Coordinator Center, which is an academic wing to mobilize academics to solve the Deep Sort problem. And also, Professor Firasakdi now serving as the, the chairman. Without further delay, please help me to welcome Professor Dr. Firasakdi. Professor Firasakdi, Ajan Firasak, the floor is yours. Please. Unmute, unmute first, Ajan. Unmute. Okay, you should unmute first. You cannot. Yeah, okay, it's okay now. Okay. Admit, right? No. Yes, okay, already. Uh, mm, I'm choosing the screen. <laughs> okay, I now see this one. 
Can you see the screen? Yes, we can okay. see. Okay. Yes. I got about uh, 30 some PowerPoints. I will take about 20 to 20 to some uh, you, minutes. Just yeah, it's okay. 20 okay. to 25 is okay. Please. Okay. Uh, mm. Um, I would like to give my update about my personal background related to COVID specialties. I have uh, since the emerging of COVID in January this year, I have written uh, about 50 articles in the lay, for the lay leaders in social media. And now it's the, the, <clears throat> the writing is now compiled to a Thai book of 52 chapters and sponsored by the National Health Security Office to publicize and publish in the book and also on the net. Uh, I'm also currently a consultant to Minister of Public Health on COVID-19 issues. And we have a weekly meeting. I'm a consultant to Thailand Development Research Institute, which is the Economics Institute, and the National Research Council of Thailand on socioeconomic measures to mitigate COVID-19 effects. Uh, the project that I have been helping the uh, junior of my student and my alumni uh, working uh, on the series of projects. One is the factor predicting a person who already contacted COVID-19. Uh, what is the predictor to make them become COVID-19 case? And this one has been accepted for publication by British Medical Journal, a very famous journal. And other uh, co complete project is uh, impact of closure on daycare centers, primary school on young children of low socioeconomic status, which uh, I will present part of the results of today. And then the socioeconomic impact of 19, COVID-19 in Phuket tourism business. This one is uh, commissioned by UNDP and it is ongoing. And the social aspect of COVID-19 quarantines, this one by Dr. Alisa, the, uh, another good friend of RJS. And also smoking behavior during COVID-19 lockdown is ongoing uh, by Ajahn Lassami. And other biomedical research about, uh, about three or four of them. So I have been uh, quite uh, committed to this one. The research theme for this presentation is uh, aim to have this uh, socioeconomic data to present to you is uh, by the PSU UNDP research team, uh, which I am the project advisor. The PI is uh, professor, assistant professor Kulada in Phuket and Dr. Sukamkon in Hatyai and Dr. Thamasin, etc. And uh, one of the data set that I used to present the slide is prepared by Dr. Lohani J. the nurse, the Dean of Nursing Faculties at PSU. Also a very good friend to uh, Banda Ajes. And then also the TDI COVID-19 response teams. The source of information that I use to, I, I have to quote them is mainly from Kung Si research team. Kung Si is a, is a private bank, but they do very good research on the impact of uh, socioeconomic impact, especially economic impact and, and mitigation methods for this COVID-19 for Thailand. I think this one, we can compare with the Indonesian bank, whether you are doing the same thing or different things. And also this the Thailand development research in still or TDI and other research team members. The first one is uh, we look want to have a look at the evidence on relationship between lockdown, uh, country lockdown and GDP loss 
this is the, the original ideas from the Minister of Public Health Austral of Health in Australia, just broadcasting on ABC News Australia last week. So I got it from the web and then I took the data and I reanalyzed the data. Uh, this is the original data. The data come from a company uh, in America, which the minister called. And you see that this is the lockdown stringency index for different countries. The heaviest one is uh, uh, Italy for sometimes, but also New Zealand on the right hand, but the shaded blue lines, that is four month average is in descending order. So you see that Sweden has the lowest stringencies on the lockdowns. And these are all developed countries, not include Indonesia, Thailand, and any country in ASEAN, unfortunately. So, and we see that this is the impact on the GDP. All the country got a negative impact, right? And uh, the heaviest one is perhaps uh, UK and then Spain, and then France and then Italy. Uh, the low one will be South Korea, uh, New Zealand, and what is Sweden here. So, so the minister said that the lockdown can prevent the economic uh, burnout. And then I checked whether this one is true. So I did this. Uh, Uh, I using R, uh, enter the data and do the scatter plot and calculate the uh, Pearson coefficients. The R is minus point, point 0.4, which is a negative. It does it mean that the more stringent you lock, lock down, the more likely that you will have the impact, negative impact on your GDP. I think this is the reason for your, for your uh, government, perhaps, because your government is afraid of uh, lockdown may damage the, 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 um, the economy. And, it's, and uh, the next slide shows that uh, you have to be careful because lockdown, certainly, as evidence shows, this is in, in developed country that lockdown have a negative economic consequence which quite important uh, values. But however, uh, I think you don't lock down, but you, if you neglect the other cost effective, uh, effective and low cost measures, I think that is sinful because it's highly, debts, debts are highly dividable. Uh, these are the four things that uh, I think you, I, I don't know about your country, but we have been exercising very, very strongly in Thailand. First is social distancing. Okay, social distancing, we close down the crowders and the close space activities in the pub, the bar, etc. And second, uh, mask wearing. We already uh, announced that I and mean, in Thailand has 90, 90 some percent prevalence of wearing masks even now today. And hand watching, hand watching, we have alcohol everywhere, all the, all the public places, people, people can wash their hand with alcohol and in the toilet with a soap, not only just water. And the last one is abstain from smoking. And this is the study that I I propose, and then uh, my junior colleagues did this study in Thailand and published in the British Med Journal of Medicine, VMJ. Uh, so we start with the COVID patients, COVID-19 patients, and, and then we follow up their contact and see whether the contact will turn into a case so this is a cohort study, but a so-called nested case control study in epidemiology. You can ask Dr. Sunila, what, this, what does this one mean? <laughs> and then we compare 
the behavior of the one who become case in the future and the one who did not become case and get this results. The, the, the difference is measured in terms of odds ratio. That is, uh, if the odds ratio is less than one, the, the mechanism is protective. So we found that all the recommended measures uh, cross uh, such distance less than one meter. The odds ratio is 0.15. That is, you reduce the odds by 85% by just stay away from one meter. And duration that you cross to the case, if this is less than 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes the odds is reduced by three quarter. And if you wash your hand frequently, you will reduce the, uh, by another two thirds. And if you share, if you don't share the cigarette, you reduce more or less the same. If you practice all of this, the case would be reduced by 84%. In epidemiology, we call this one a population attributable factor or PAF. You can ask Dr. Sunila about this one. The PAF of this uh, behavioral combined is 48%. That means that we could reduce 84% of the case. So it's uh, people, a lot, we save a lot of life by this simple method, uh, not, not necessarily locked down. So if you just lock down and then you don't exercise this one uh, rigorously, then you still have a lot of case. So saying that lockdown is bad, but personal hygiene is very important. Okay, don't miss this one. Uh, now I want to move to ASEAN countries, uh, economies on the COVID. And this is the, from the, the Kung Si Bank's uh, summary in uh, September. Uh, we see that in ASEAN, the, it's, ASEAN is in the phase of recoveries. Uh, look at Indonesian first, this is down here. No, sorry. Indonesian has adjusted the target. You expect to have not too bad, the GDP code is uh, more or less stable, not, not, not as bad as what we saw in the, in the previous slide. It means that your government is aiming to have uh, quite the good results in economies although you lost a lot of life. <laughs> uh, what the other countries? Myanmar, Myan we have three main countries who have uh, still suffering from, uh, from COVID-19. We have Indonesia, Philippines, and Myanmar. Myanmar has a good news. They have got 6% they got GDP growth. Maybe because the original value is low. So even with COVID-19, they still have GDP growth. But this is a calculation probably before the most recent outbreak. We still have to see that next month do, will they still have the same projection of 6% GDP growth? I think it would be quite different because the outbreak in Myanmar nowadays is quite serious. And the Philippines, Philippines also try very hard. Philippines induced a new system they call FUSIS with biometric information. So even you don't have the bank account, your money will reach you. I don't know how. <laughs> but uh, Vietnam, Vietnam has, uh, Vietnam was hit by the second wave, but this is small, so they can cover very well. Cambodia, I think Cambodia is just like Thailand. Cambodia heavily depend on the tourism. So still not so good and expect the negative, uh, negative impact from this uh, uh, negative uh, from no tourists. The Laos, Laos is perhaps one of the worst in ASEAN because they are downgate for that uh, S and P index. Uh, and I think that's that's the pictures of our picture. But come back to Thailand mainly. Uh, we have. Quicker in May and June. You can see that our domestic consumption, this is year on year basis, is reduced 
uh, to 11 percent, but in June uh, it's quite recovered. It's now just minus uh, 4.7, and the private investment uh, for year, year on years uh, on in May in 18 become 12. Manufacturer production also recover and capacity utilization is now uh, still a problem. And this is a heat map. For statistics students, you have to exercise your heat map quite a lot nowadays, not just tabulation, because heat map give you very good ideas how, how, to, how to summarize the results. And you can see that in the, the column represent the month in 2019 and 2020, the, the color, the green color is mean the, is zero. And the red is, uh, is too bad that the deep, the deep one is, the deep one is you can see here that private consumption in April and May because the country locked down, see? When the country locked down, private consumption reduced substantially. And all this one in non-durable reduction, semi-durable reductions and service non-resident expenditures. Only construction sales still going on well. And you know, when, when, when uh, uh, June is, is recovered. So earlier, in fact, earlier we already, all, before COVID-19, we already have construction earlier, uh, permission logistics and construction material sales. Maybe this negative results in this positive. The next one is the overall uh, import. And you can see that we, we don't import materials, both fruit because uh, we've locked down. So the fruit imports and we can reduce by 70% year on years. And capital goods, law material, consumable goods and vehicle, which is very heavily, even, even in, you know, in June is still negative. And tourism is the worst one. So tourism, you can see that in 2015, 2016, we have, we have increasing number of foreign, foreign tourists. Uh, Thailand is uh, one of the leading country in tourism. But suddenly in this year, it's uh, reduced at 65% uh, year on year. Not only the foreigner, but also the Thai tourists also. And this is the, uh, number of oh boy, <laughs> number of uh, unemployment <laughs> uh, we increased by almost uh, five hundred percent. Very heavy in June. Uh, I cannot move. How can I move? Okay. And the consumer price index is reduced in 2020s. And also all sorts of things except medical and medical field is an exception. People still have to see doctors. And this is uh, the impacts expected uh, for the next years. You see that the researchers expect that uh, this year forecast, this is, this is, this is still a bad year, sorry. This year is still a bad year, but next year it will gradually recover. The, the one that is less hit is the current account balance. Uh, it's good that the country still have some positive account balance. And policy interest rate is just like, I think just Maybe it's just like Indonesia. Uh, the growth part, the growing part is, uh, you see most are negative except one part that is the uh, agriculture and food processing. So agriculture sector is quite least uh, square compared to other, other kind of production, electronic automobiles, uh, plastic, uh, which means the uh, 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 what you call petrol, pet, uh, pet, petrochemical and rubbers all reduce. 
but rubber recently increased by 10%, you know, at the left light side here, because uh, of medical reason, the outbreak, continue outbreak of COVID uh, lead to increased demand in rubbers. Uh, that is the macroeconomic picture. I, I, I want to see some smaller group, which one has been accepted. First one is the, is the elderly. And you can see here that uh, the serious one is deep here. So during the lockdown period, self-care is quite serious. And the more serious one is transportation because the elderly cannot move. And also they got difficulty in access to medical care because a lot of hospital is locked down. And some problem with shop shopping, but not much problem because they don't have to take care of other family members. And this is the finance uh, in, in general. Uh, this is entirely sorry, but you just see that the black color means they don't have any right. Mostly the elderly don't get much support. What about the kids? We look at uh, this is the deep south. Is the deep south we have Muslim? This is just like uh, just like some part of Indonesia, uh, very similar to RJ. A lot of you have been there before. Uh, the study was conducted by Ajahn Lohani, who is the head of the the dean of uh, Deccan of uh, what you call a faculty of faculty of nursing. So this is her study design. She looked different methods, used different methods. She has the online primary survey. On, online primary survey on here. And then she have qualitative study. And then she has household survey. So the sample size is quite big. Uh, and the response rate is not bad because People are locked down when the, the student visit, they can get good results. And this is the problem, mostly in the shaded area, you see that food insecurity is about a quarter. This is the children. Children have to rely on instant noodles and canned fish, not, not so good. And also uh, people say this is, this is worse than and this is as usual. So, and then uh, the most important thing in, in, socio, in social problem is child abuse. Uh, when locked down, the parents, the guardian become more emotional and got more verbal abuse and uh, physical abuse. Uh, physical abuse uh, increased by 10% and verbal abuse increased by 22%. And uh, the qualitative study found that there's also sexual abuse among uh, family with uh, unemployed members uh, living at, at uh, unemployed visiting uh, members uh, coming into home. So this is quite annoying. Uh, so the need what they need is mostly the kids want to get discount on tuition fee here. See, this is 60% want. And then need IT because at that time we have, we have uh, started to have the online teaching and the guardian, the parent has to buy the notebook or, or iPad or, or tablets. And then the, but what they receive is actually food <laughs> and about 5,000 baht per month. So depend on what they want to do. So in short term, there's high incidence of uh, mental health problems, stigmatization, access to healthcare and child abuse. So, and also reduction of, of uh, access to care, especially. Uh, this is the uh, the final series that I want to look at. This is about the choice, policy choice that uh, one should look at. The first one is the 
uh, interest rate cut. And you see that most interest rate cut has uh, more or less this small number is a person uh, having liquidity shortage. So it does not help that much. If the one that in, uh, benefit from interest rate cut is in the light color here. And when you see this is the second uh, measure, the, the third measure, the second measure. My my screen is blocked by <laughs> something at the top. So this is debt monetarium. Debt monetarium is slightly better. You you see that on the left side, this kind of industry has has a benefit from slightly benefit from debt debt monetarium. The, the the light color here. Okay. And the next one is easing credit. And this one is uh, the best one. One of the best is you, you allow people to get, uh, to get the credit, to get the loan more easily. And a lot of company, a small business you will help, uh, will help benefit. And also giving the leg loans focus, targeted the leg loan. And this is the overall, you see that interest led cut will have only 3% reduction. <laughs> but if you income tax wave, you reduce by 5%. Debt monetary reduce by 10%. Easing credit condition, this is substantial, 26%. And target direct loan is uh, nearly 30%. So, so these two measures is the bank should consider uh, by, by the forecasting. In conclusion, this is my last slide. There are evidence of correlation between lockdown and economic hardship. But I think most of the analysis uh, disregard life. So I think this is, this is ethical concern. If, if you want to have uh, economy growing, but still people are dying, I think this is, this is uh, not so good. Uh, the other measure that uh, we have not seen much and maybe room for improvement in our ASEAN region is personal hygiene because this is cost-effective measures to fight back COVID-19. So ASEAN countries differ in economic impact from COVID-19, uh, not much in relation with the uh, outbreak condition, which means that uh, for example, in Indonesia, you have serious, out, uh, serious outbreak, but you still are in, uh, in economic growth. But most of the problem remain on the tourism industry. Uh, this example, are, uh, Thailand and Cambodia. And vulnerable population are elderly and young children uh, from social pathology, not just, not just the the uh, fiscal disease. And among financial measures, probably the target loan and easing of credit will have most financial benefit to the firms. I, I think I think that's all I want to, to show. And maybe it's 30 minutes. Is that right? Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ajahn Firasak, for your interesting presentation. And now I would like to pick a few questions from the already posted in the chat room. Uh, directly, you can answer, Ajan. Yes, yes. Hi, uh, I am Norma Yunda from Shah Kuala University. There is something I want to ask. Why in your research you are uh, considering about smoking behavior during COVID-19? Does it affect the effect of on COVID-19? Okay, yes. please answer, Ajahn. Yes, we, because uh, COVID-19 is infection on the deep sides of the lung, not just, not just in the nose, not like common cause. And the particle carried by smoke can enter that area. So we want to check that one. So in the case control study, the relative risk is uh, 3.4. If especially for chilling, chilling cigarette. Smoking alone is not a problem, but chilling cigarette is very important. So 
So I think this one, this information should be distributed in Indonesia where you have really high prevalence. I, my recommendation is abstain. <laughs> if you abstain, then, then you also abstain, of course, from sharing. But sharing, sharing is, sharing smoking, sharing cigarette is more important than, than the sharing utensil, dish or you know, spoon. I think one, one thing that we did not look in the list factor is the, the food hygiene, because in Thailand, everybody use, uh, use fork and spoon, right? But in Indonesia and in many countries, in, in Myanmar, etc., in Southeast Asia, a lot of countries, people use fingers. So if the finger is not uh, carefully watched, then and you share the same utensil. This may also transmit COVID. But I think that one needs to be studied in Indonesia because we don't have this kind of behavior in Thailand. Yes. Okay, thank you, Ajahn. And now the second question. Uh, I am Teku Samsul Bahari from Syahkwala University. My question to Ajahn Firasat, how to solve the problem simultaneously between economic impact and healthcare impact during the pandemic COVID-19 in Thailand. Please, Ajahn. Yes, so, so first of all, I think health is an social objective, uh, which is uh, if, if you die, <laughs> you cannot enjoy your wealth, right? <laughs> so you have to survive. And if you don't die, you get infected sometime, we don't know the, the long-term consequence of getting infection. So. So you have to give value to both, not just health or not just economies. Uh, depend on the country. Country like like China, they are very strict and they they also recover very quickly from economies. But country like uh, like Indonesia, uh, you recover quite. I think according to the figure that I found, you probably quick. Uh, quickly because but maybe it's, it's difficult for you to prevent COVID because of your high density population especially in Java what we see that in in not so density area like in Sumatra we still have COVID in all the provinces so so I think what what we are trying to do in the next step maybe Professor Hisia has known is we are going to work with a nursing school, okay, as near as and the other four school in our in our team to improve infection control because a lot of doctors and nurses are killed in the hospital. Yes. So so to prevent this, this is the the, the project that I am currently developed and we have a meeting soon. Uh, if we can help save, uh, if we can save people's life, people then can can work and can improve the economy, not just, you know, only the healthy, but we, we should get more healthy people to, to, to work. I mean that you, you don't need to lock down, but you have to improve the hygiene concentration. And we, we work together with the Indonesian universities and maybe with the Minister of Public in, in some months to come to see, and we see the effects. Yes. Okay, thank you, Ajahn Sirasak for uh, some question you already answered. Please uh, give big applause uh, to Ajahn Firasak. You can stay with us, Ajahn. Yes. And now I, I we... Get, I get a drink first. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now... Ajahn. Thank you, Ajahn. Okay. Thank you, Ajahn. Okay. Thank you, okay. And now we continue to the second keynote speakers, uh, Bu Yati Kurniati. Bu Yati Kurniati, right now as the executive director heads of statistic department of Bank Indonesia. She was born in Jakarta and his bachelor degree in economics at University Indonesian University, Universitas Indonesia, and then master in International University of Japan. And then he continued his PhD also again in Universitas Indonesia. Right now, uh, she is as director executive of Department Statistics. Before that, she 
was also director of Department Macro Prudential Policy. And he has been, she has been work at Bank Indonesia since 1993. Baik, Bu Yati, and the floor is yours now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pak Hizir. It's been a pleasure for me uh, to speak here in this international webinar. Uh, I do really appreciate uh, with your student of statistics program uh, that select the very relevant and timely uh, topic for this uh, Stat Explorer, uh, Stat yes, Explorer yes, yes. webinar to celebrate National Statistics Day, I think. <laughs> Um, so uh, I will complete uh, compliment to Professor Firasaki uh, uh, presentation. So it has been around eight months uh, since the first case of coronavirus was found in Jakarta uh, after attacking several other countries. Uh, indeed, the world, including Indonesia, uh, suffered a lot due to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I think uh, your uh, organizer will help me uh, to... The organizer, please, uh, the presentation of Bu Yati. Please show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me begin uh, first by highlighting uh, the global impact of COVID-19 at a glance. And, on, uh, and then I will discuss how the COVID pandemic has affected Indonesia. As Pahizir uh, asked me uh, to explore on the use of uh, big data uh, to assess uh, how the COVID pandemic affect Indonesia. So I will concentrate on uh, some indicators uh, produced by using big data. Uh, on slide four, uh, we can see here um, that the list next slide four next uh, on the slide four direct yeah uh, on this on the slide four uh, we can see that the global cases uh, before this slide I think before this slide this is five yeah okay. Okay, we can see here that uh, global cases have been already heading toward 30 million uh, as of uh, 13 September uh, 2020. Uh, I put the data from Bloomberg. So uh, in the graph below, it uh, showed that China, uh, China has started to recover, US and Japan also, uh, US and Japan second wave cases have continued to decline also. Uh, and as some big countries new, uh, new cases have been decreasing, uh, global fatality rates uh, tend to decline uh, according you, uh, to the WHO. But uh, however, other countries such, such as Spain, France, UK, India, Brazil, as well as Indonesia remain struggling uh, to alleviate the spread of this virus around the country. In the next slide, um, why the impact of this pandemic so severe to the economy? So as uh, also mentioned by Professor Virasakti, there is a lockdown in some uh, countries. To refrain from the virus, uh, global mobility has been restrained. One country closed uh, its entrance door from other affected countries, even reviews to uh, its product. Transportation halted, shipping procedures become uh, costly and time consuming, following procedures to ensure that goods being transported uh, around the globe are free from virus. So uh, we see here that in the first, uh, in, the, um, in March, uh, global mobility declined sharply. As, as such as mobility across countries, mobilities among countries in the region, mobility to the workplace, recreation, and also even mobility to the market and shopping malls also uh, sharply declined. However, in recent months, 
uh, after having a flattening uh, curve of cases, some countries have gradually released its lockdown, uh, particularly within the country, uh, which does increase its public mobility, such as commuting, uh, commuting activity, re uh, going to retail and recreational activities. So such mobility spur economic again to recover. Uh, Professor Fiyosaki uh, mentioned the correlation between uh, a stringent lockdown index and a contraction of GDP. I also um, quoted that, but maybe different, different sources. I'm using uh, effective uh, lockdown index from uh, Bloomberg. And we can see here the correlation if, uh, from the plot graph here showing that the tighter the lockdown index, the higher the GDP contraction. So um, it's uh, similar to the, the, uh, what the Professor Fiyasaki uh, mentioned before. So uh, the next slide, we see that uh, due to the lockdown, world trade volume, global export activity declined significantly in particular in the first semester of 2020, in line with the worst condition of COVID cases around the world. Um, World trade volume are expected to increase in the second semester of 2020 in response to um, some countries, uh, especially big countries, start to loosening their lockdown policy, as indicated uh, on the right hand of uh, graph below, uh, we see that container index is already upward trended, particularly in uh, since uh, July. Um, it's, uh, it's indicated that the global trade is started to recover. How this COVID uh, pandemic has affected Indonesia? Uh, the next slide. In such a delicate situation like a COVID pandemic, the authorities uh, need to have information as fast as possible to make timely important decision. Thanks to the rapid advancement in uh, technology and computing techniques, big data analytics that facilitate us to extract information faster from digital data and other available granular data. Uh, in Indonesia, some indicators, economic indicators, um, issued more uh, less frequent. So um, we need uh, other indicators, uh, proxy indicators at least, to see how uh, the pandemic uh, affected uh, the uh, the economy. Uh, we certainly acknowledge that the development of digital economy and finance are amazing. Digital services here um, have touched on all aspects of our day-to-day -day activities. The number of internet users are skyrocketing. We see here in uh, the numbers uh, almost uh, double penetration. Uh, we use smartphone now not only for communication but also for economic activities, economic transaction, and this creates huge amount of data that have high value in it. If we can extract information appropriately and use it properly, for instance, to get to know the impact of COVID of on our economy. So, in slide nine, uh, next, I, I just want to show uh, various sources of data. Uh, being used by Bank Indonesia, example, we have uh, uh, reporting uh, periodically from uh, banks and also from a corporation. Uh, also, we have transactional data capturing for payment system and money market settlement. Also, we do survey and liaison. And as a secondary data, we have also uh, administrative uh, data from other ministries and big data sources such as um, uh, access to uh, online news, uh, e-commerce, online portal, internet search data, satellite, satellite image, or 
sensor data. So I want to focus to use big data sources as described in uh, slide 10. Uh, we use uh, uh, we use payment system data. Uh, this uh, high frequency data, daily data, online. Uh, we also use online digital platform data as we have uh, data transaction data of e-commerce, uh, big e uh, for e-commerce. Uh, we also have uh, uh, online portal. Sometimes uh, some we also use open source data, internet source data, and Bloomberg. Uh, I skip uh, the uh, slide 11. Slide 11 is, uh, is about uh, how to process the extract information. Maybe you have, uh, maybe student in, in, in Sakwala have already got it uh, from, uh, from the lecture. And we move to slide 12. Out of some advantage in big data analytics for assessing the impact of coronavirus on Indonesian economy, uh, big data particularly have an advantage of addressing data gap. That's why uh, I put check on it. Uh, this addressing data gap and data lag uh, by providing us new data and new indicators more uh, timely. Uh, in the next slide, uh, it's just an overview that COVID-19 cases in Indonesia still increasing. Uh, we see here that local government of uh, certain province, such as Jakarta and Banten, remain apply strict social restriction. We, don't, we didn't call it lockdown, but we, we call it um, uh, social restriction, uh, high large scale social restriction we call it that not not lockdown while other province uh, indicate in green and black shade have loosened it up gradually wow webinar uh, including uh, aceh we see here it's green uh, so it's uh, the the uh, social restriction has been loose, loosened up in aceh um, large scale social restriction that apply in some province certainly affect mobility. Uh, we can retrieve global mobility freely. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, from Google Mobility Report that we give you every week um, in slide 14. Uh, slide 14, please. Google can track our mobility from tracking our GPS in our smartphone. So wherever you go, Google can uh, capture it. Uh, so I would like to give a student the idea how to get, process, and analyze the data from open source like a Google Mobility Report. So can analyze uh, and using uh, from, uh, for many uh, things. On the uh, slide 15, a graph on the left of uh, slide 15 uh, shows that mobility in uh, big cities. See here that mobility in Jakarta or Bali are dropped the most uh, during the spread of uh, COVID-19. So uh, Jakarta is the, the, the center for business activities and Bali is the center of tourism. As mentioned by uh, a professor, um, that uh, tourism is the, more, the most affected sector uh, because of this social restriction and lockdown from other countries. In the, uh, in the, slide, mid, in the middle, um, slide in the middle, we can differentiate six mobility uh, in Indonesia according to its purpose. Mobility to the workplace, transportation uh, to the transit station or uh, transportation, mobility to go to retail store, mobility to uh, pharmacy and grocery, to the park, and or remain in residential area or remain at home. So the graph in the middle shows that during COVID-19, people mostly stay at home. See, see green uh, line here. Uh, while mobility to other purpose drop started in March when the government officially announced the case and then a few weeks later imposed social restriction in large scale. 
uh, we see here uh, the the blue line and the uh, the yellow line uh, the people mobility to the workplace and transportation uh, transit station remain below pre-COVID level until now. Since most companies, institutions work from home, uh, particularly in big cities, or even stop their activities. Uh, this affected the demand on online transportation that was um, largely used in big cities like Gojek, Grab, something like that. There's also decline in co-movement uh, with, uh, with a declining uh, mobility to the workplace. See here uh, in uh, upper uh, graphs. And uh, recently, mobility to the grocery and pharmacy and retail have gradually approaching the uh, pre-COVID level. So it's been uh, recovery, uh, people mobility to these places because some places have uh, reduced, uh, loosened up the social restriction. How about people mobility in Aceh? Slide 16. Uh, people mobility in uh, Aceh, uh, red line, it's higher than national and uh, also higher uh, compared to uh, Sumatra as a whole. So maybe uh, you people uh, in, uh, in Aceh doesn't like to stay at home, <laughs> we don't know. So uh, uh, actually this, this um, also means that the economic activity, um, we see here the workplace, uh, it's improving in July, but then it's slightly uh, declining again, entering September. Uh, maybe Pa Hizir later can <laughs> can tell us what's going on. Is uh, work from home uh, apply more strictly during uh, lately? So, how the impact on employment? Uh, you know that um, employment uh, data, uh, the official employment data issued by BPS, B annually. Um, but we need to have more frequent information about employment. How do we do that? Uh, next slide. Uh, we can do survey, but during the pandemic, response rate for online survey uh, to corporation are low. Not to mention that we couldn't uh, do the face-to-face -face interview during COVID. So uh, we do have access to online job portal, and you also can try uh, Web scrap to uh, for for exercise. Uh, then uh, this information from uh, job offering from a portal help us to create a proxy job availability in the UAP sector, so called job vacancy index. So uh, in Bank Indonesia, calculate job vacancy index as leading indicators for employment. In uh, slide eleven, uh, job vacancy dropped significantly and reach. Uh, in slide 18, job vacancy dropped significantly and reached lowest in May 2020 before it, it's gradually start up uh, upward trend in limited way. Both uh, index and also its growth uh, movement in similar way. Slide 18, the worst job opportunities uh, if we see it um, spatially, the worst job vacancy, uh, slide 18, the contraction of job vacancy occurred uh, particularly in accommodation sector. Uh, next, please. The accommodation sector that cover hotel and restaurant. Uh, I only took uh, those who uh, job vacancy index dropped year on year more than uh, 70%. So the worst job vacancy contraction occurred in accommodation sector, hotel and restaurant, financial sector, education, and construction. So many construction activities were halted during COVID-19 and only lately uh, in Jakarta is uh, 
since August is uh, started again. And the most affected province in terms of employment construction, uh, slide 20, are Bangka Blitung, Bali, Jogja, and Jambi. Uh, Blitung, Bali, and Yogyakarta is mainly uh, the activities come from tourism. So that's most affected this area. And uh, slide 21, we also extract from payments uh, data uh, to have uh, to know the impact on income and household consumption uh, using data from payment system settlement. Uh, we differentiate a uh, transaction by household uh, and business uh, entity. So when you transfer your money, uh, you are required to, to fill uh, the transfer is what for. So uh, using uh, tax mining, we can, um, we can uh, differentiate and categorize a transfer to pay for consumption, a transfer for payroll and others. So in slide 23, just uh, move on to 23, we can see growth of household consumption uh, declined sharply since February to May 2020. And uh, in June, due to Ramadan and Muslim festivity, the consumption spending increased temporarily. It's a seasonal factor, but then fall again in July and August, though not as low as me. And this similar pattern, but in different level, uh, we can see the growth consumption indicators in Aceh as well as Sumatra, or we can also calculate for other area. And the trend in payroll transfer also similar in the next, uh, next page, next slide. Um, also indicates construction in income payment for employee uh, during uh, from from uh, started uh, declining in March. Then the lowest is in May, uh, but in June there was a high growth of uh, temporary. There was a high as employer might pay extra allowances for celebrating Muslim festivity. And, but then in July and uh, August, it's declining if, uh, again. So um, there, it seems that in the, fourth, in the third quarter, there is a slight improvement, but it's, uh, not, uh, it's still limited improvement compared to the uh, second quarter. Uh, the other indicators for consumption spending can be seen from the growth of transaction using a debit card, credit card, uh, the next uh, slide, uh, slide 25. Uh, other indicators for consumption spending can be seen uh, from the growth of transaction using debit card, uh, credit card, electronic money, uh, compared to retail sales. Um, this, uh, this trend, uh, the trend movement are also confirmed that the trough of consumption spending in Indonesia was in May 2020. Since then, there is a, a slight improvement, but very limited. In BPS uh, data, the statistical agency data, the private consumption in second quarter contracted uh, in slide 26, cont uh, contracted 5.6%. So uh, we uh, maybe the the you know, using this this uh, the indicators that I have been explained, maybe there is a, a light improvement in quarter uh, in the third quarter in consumption, but only very slightly. In slide 27. Uh, now, next, I would like, uh, yeah, this is uh, to, sh yeah. Uh, we also process transaction data from four large marketplaces to see the impact on real trade at e-commerce. 
um, e-commerce transaction growth. Uh, so this is the process how we did it that. And in slide 29, uh, e-commerce uh, transaction growth uh, also in declining trend. Up to May, uh, which is the first time it grew negative. And the transaction improved in June and remained positive growth till August 2020. So all the indicators uh, moved the same. So the trough in May and started to improve in uh, June and so forth. Uh, interestingly, uh, in slide 30, I would like uh, to show you that e-commerce transaction in Aceh increased rapidly, especially during the COVID pandemic. We see that uh, in February, in February, it's only, uh, it's the right-hand side, uh, red line, this is Aceh. Uh, the gray line is Indonesia uh, as a whole. This is uh, percent, uh, percent changes, GOJ. Uh, February, uh, sorry, this is uh, nominal in terms of billion rupiah. Uh, in February, it's only about 40, uh, 40 uh, billion rupiah a month transaction from Aceh. But now it's uh, in August, it's rapid increase into uh, 118 billion rupiah. Uh, yeah, I just uh, would like to, to see how interesting uh, that uh, you now uh, use uh, e-commerce transaction uh, widely in Aceh. Uh, slide 31. And uh, that's uh, the last uh, indicators that I would like uh, to show. Uh, finally, uh, many things we can explore uh, with online uh, data, news, and other granular data. Uh, I have, uh, uh, Bank Indonesia have uh, explored uh, many uh, granular data uh, by using data analytics because the benefit, the benefit of big data analytics is not only to filling the gap uh, filling the data gap, uh, for instance, like uh, assessing the impact of coronavirus, uh, but also uh, big data analytics can be deployed to, uh, to assess industry behavior, market behavior, to see interconnectedness between market player um, using network analy uh, analysis, as well as assess public perception or market expectation. All such assessment is really important for us as a central bank. Uh, the challenge is the, uh, the cleansing process of the data, particularly if we dealt with unstructured data. That will take, uh, in our case, 60% of, of uh, my staff time, my, my, my staff is cleansing uh, the data. So, it is necessary now for the student in statistic program uh, to equip and enhance your skill, um, enhance yourself with uh, knowledge and skills such as uh, data science, computer science. Since we now we have we facing a rapid advancement in digital economy and finance, and uh, the knowledge and the expertise demand are high in that area. So. Uh, that's uh, all my uh, presentation. Uh, so it is very useful to have uh, uh, big data analytics uh, to know the impact of uh, coronavirus and on the economy. With that, I end my presentation. Thank you, Pahaji, Pahizir. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Bu Yati, for your interesting presentation, as well in actually how what you see big data analytics uh, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, in Aceh is green yes maybe three months ago still green but now already red also, oh, also red yeah also, okay. maybe because of the behavior <laughs> of Achenese people yeah they prefer to go to the coffee shop um, yeah that, <laughs> that, 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 yeah we hope that uh, after the situation, that not good right now in Aceh, maybe not anymore, not many, yeah, not many go to to the coffee shop. Okay, 
you uh, mentioned also regarding what is the importance of big data analytics. You mentioned also about Python, yeah, the programming language Python and Hadoop and also Spark and also with Google Trend Mobility. Yeah, this is important for our students uh, to, to paper for their future, right now in the, in the future. And some of our students, right. alumni also, right now what we call they try to to compete with the others to to be a employer or officer of bank indonesia uh, this this time yes. yesterday yesterday actually yes. the the test yeah the yesterday hope that maybe there is a chance also for from our uh, alumni from statistic department oh, uh, to be a employer or officer of Bank Indonesia, Central Bank Indonesia. Okay, now there are some questions already raised. I will, uh, yeah, pick some. Yeah, uh, there is from Fahmi. Uh, Der Ibu Yati, I am currently working on time series data. How I can obtain certain daily or monthly update data set from Central Bank? For free, sometimes certain data set do not available on website. Okay. Uh, maybe. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Please. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, the the uh, uh, if you mention what kind of data, uh, actually this uh, what we call bicara in in uh, communication of Bank Indonesia. So uh, uh, everything you want to ask. Uh, just uh, email them, then they will transfer to us. So if we, uh, most of our uh, data, if not, if it is not confidential, we can provide the data. So uh, just email to uh, to uh, contact uh, Bicara. Uh, there is a website in Bank Indonesia. Uh, they will pass on. Uh, because all the communication from uh, from outside uh, come into one door, so uh, from uh, Bicara they will pass on uh, your request uh, to my department. Uh, that's uh, the way to get uh, the data. Hopefully, uh, the data that you ask is not confidential. So if it is not confidential, uh, we mm -hmm. can share the data. Okay, thank you, Bu Yati. And next is from Dr. Saiful Mahdi. Uh, Dear Bu Yati, Indonesian Finance Minister already announced that Indonesia is entering recession soon. <coughs> what does it mean? Do we need to worry? What should we do as a student or regular citizens? Please. Yeah. Um, actually, if... Uh... Hmm. It's a difficult question, actually. <laughs> so, first, uh, <laughs> Mahdi, um, yeah, we we have to uh, to follow the protocol procedure, COVID protocol procedure. You, procedure. Uh, so uh, we still have to work, go to work as usual, and um, do the ec economic activity as usual. Um, those uh, so. With by using by by uh, doing a regular activity, uh, while uh, on the same time uh, also uh, following the uh, health procedure 3M, uh, 3M, uh, mencuci tangan, menjaga jarak, dan uh, uh, what's that? one one more I forgot. <laughs> uh, also uh, to maintain the hygiene ourselves, uh, then we 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 can still. Uh, spur the economy to grow, because if we halted all the economic activity, then we cannot do. Uh, uh, we can uh, survive the economy. So uh, what I mean is, uh, if you do the, uh, we see that the export of Indonesia is growing again as uh, China, uh, America is already open uh, their market again. So first. Um, the the economy was poor from the export side uh, for uh, uh, for recovery, 
uh, and then follow uh, firstly uh, when the government uh, also distributed what it is so social uh, bansos, uh, social um, help for right. for the needed, uh, use it properly uh, to stimulate demand. So as a member of faculty and also student, so uh, do the, still do the activity to create domestic demand, uh, while all the exporters doing their job to spur the export. So with it, uh, with that way, we can still spur our economy uh, to grow again, slowly but surely. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you very much, Bu Yati, for your presentation and some of uh, question and answer already give. Okay, big applause to Bu Yati. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And now uh, the last one, Pak Firdaus, but not least, yeah, Pak Firdaus uh, from uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, he is now as the Executive Director of CMT. Mr. Firdaus is a career diplomat of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Republic Indonesia. He has been served for the ministry for more than 30 years, but now he settled down for a moment at Kuala Lumpur. Mr. Firdaus, uh, he is an Director economist. Uh, he graduated from Andalas Singa, University, West Sumatra, and his graduate Singa, studies Singa, from University Singa, of Singa, Pajajaran, uh, Bandung. Okay, Pak Firdaus, uh, time is yours now. Thank you very much, Pak Dr. Izir. Um, um, first of all, uh, allow me to congratulate. I would like to uh, join my colleague, the previous speakers, uh, to congratulate the uh, Statistic uh, Student Association for this um, very important event. Uh, this is a very, very um, active student uh, in Shah Kuala University. Um, uh, I was there sometimes, so uh, I think that um, end of last year, uh, I met with some students, uh, so uh, in Siakwala University, and some of the students from Siakwala University also had the intensive uh, program in uh, CMT office in Putrajaya, Kuala Lumpur. So uh, again, uh, congratulations to, to all the committee, uh, and then uh, I hope that uh, uh, this um, activities can be continued. My colleague, uh, Ibu Yati Kurniati from Bank Indonesia, Jakarta. Selamat sore, Ibu Yati. And also Swadikap to Prof. Uh, Firasakti. So uh, I was in um, um, uh, PSU University sometime, uh, I think four months ago, but unfortunately, um, uh, uh, I didn't meet you. Uh, looking forward to meet you, Pro, in the PSU University. <laughs> and one thing that I also miss in Bandache at the moment, uh, as mentioned by Ibu Yati, now we are now is uh, try to avoid uh, gathering now. So, but I miss uh, so long coffee in Bandache, Pa Izil. <laughs> <laughs> so we are looking forward to have the uh, coffee uh, together in Bandache again. So again, so for my presentation now, uh, I will not to discuss too much about the statistic data because already um, presented very well by uh, the expert, uh, Ibu Yati and also Prof. Um, uh, Firasakti. Uh, but uh, I would like to, 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 to see what is the impact of the COVID-19 on sub-regional cooperation. So as we are aware that the sub-regional cooperation, MTGT, consists of three countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. Okay, next. Uh, I believe that not so many our students as well are uh, familiar with MTGT at the moment. At least allow me to update all of you 
uh, about the current uh, status of IMTGT at the moment. So in the last data we have in 2018, uh, we have the sub working group uh, of uh, um, uh, trade investment and, and uh, facilitate uh, ITITD. Uh, uh, our data in 2018, so the population in MTGT uh, region at the moment is uh, around 84.1 million. So if you can see here in, in our screen at the moment, uh, what is the, the region or members of uh, MTGT actually? So in Indonesia, the whole island of Sumatra, 10 provinces are members of MTGT, and we have eight states in a uh, uh, peninsula of Malaysia. Uh, uh, we have also 18 provinces in the southern part of uh, Thailand. So uh, that is the members of the MTGT, sub-regional corporations. Uh, in terms of UNINET as well, uh, we have also 25 university uh, in each of the provinces and uh, PSU, one of them, and Siakwala uh, uh, University, also the founder of the UNINET uh, University Network in MTGT. If you compare with the, uh, the, the combined population in MTGT, so uh, in uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand, I, I mean, uh, so in MTGT around 23% of the uh, total population. And then uh, in terms of the labor force around 22.4% uh, uh, compared with the um, MTGT, uh, uh, MT countries. You can see also on the screen at the moment, um, the GDP per capita uh, in 2018 according to our data is uh, 14,000.305. It is quite high. It is upper middle countries already. Uh, but I believe that during COVID-19, um, we will also uh, uh, go lower uh, to perhaps to the lower uh, middle income country. We will see. So our statistician, statistician uh, working on that. And we will hear also uh, uh, how uh, the condition situation would be uh, uh, in 2020 later on. And you can see as well the GDP um, of the MTGT here, uh, around 22.7% out of the uh, IMT countries. IMT meaning that Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. And also uh, around 15.2% 15, 15 out of the ASEAN countries. So ASEAN is 10 countries as uh, uh, already uh, touch upon by our previous speakers. So MTGT um, uh, GDP is around 15.2%. Okay, next. Um, okay, um, uh, it also uh, important for our student and participant to know that uh, what is our vision uh, in MTGT. So uh, our vision is um, um, uh, by 2036, uh, to uh, to have the in, um, hang on uh, integrated innovative inclusive and sustainable subregion so that is what we want to achieve by 2036 so the real gdp uh, uh, will increase into uh, 694 billion us dollar um, so we are um, uh, in 2014, we are around uh, 215 billion. And then uh, GDP per capita, uh, what we want to achieve by 2036, uh, income per capita around 32,000 uh, US dollar. It is quite high, you know. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, we are going to, to achieve now. And then uh, currently by the data 2000 in 2018, our, as I mentioned earlier, our income per capita is around 14,000, uh, 0.305. And then uh, uh, intra uh, MTGT uh, trade um, um, will achieve around 28%. And by 2015, uh, already 9.2%. And also in terms of the FDI inflows, uh, to MTGT, uh, we are going to achieve around 24 billion, uh, but 2018, uh, we already achieved a 10.1 billion. Uh, 
so uh, almost half. And then uh, in terms of the um, uh, tourism, uh, you can see I saw on the screen at the moment, uh, what we are going to achieve by 2036 is uh, 109 million uh, international uh, visitor uh, coming to uh, MTGT uh, region. So what, where are we now? Uh, by 2018 data, uh, there are around 44.8 million um, tourists coming to uh, our uh, region, MTGT regions. So uh, still a long way to go, uh, but we still have time. Hopefully, uh, after the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, we can increase our uh, international, international visitors again to our sub-region. Uh, and on top of this, we have also a target uh, for uh, smart cities. So uh, in MTGT, we are going to achieve around uh, 40 uh, cities, yeah? uh, green cities, uh, uh, until 2036. Now, uh, by 2020, uh, uh, we have already 10 cities already, uh, uh, smart cities. So that is about the vision uh, of MTGT. And then next. And then it is also important for our students to know that what is our pillar cooperation. And for your information, the MTGT was established 27 years ago by three leaders. Um, uh, Tun Mahadia from Malaysia, uh, President Suharto uh, from Indonesia, and Prime Minister uh, Chung Lai Pai from Thailand um, 27 years ago. So uh, what is the, the pillar of cooperation MTGT? So we have three main pillars of cooperation, uh, namely uh, tourist, tourism, uh, and then agriculture and agro-based industry, and halal product and services. So there are three main pillars of MTGT cooperation. And the rest four, uh, transport and ICT connectivity. Uh, and we have also trade and investment. We have human resources development, education and culture. And uh, we have the environment as an enabler. So to all together, we have seven uh, pillars of cooperation. Okay, next. And then on top of this, we have also uh, how to achieve our vision by 2036. So we have the economic corridor um, uh, in MTGT. Uh, currently, we have five economic corridors. So you can see that the interesting one is uh, EC5, economic corridor five now, uh, uh, extended Songkla, uh, 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 sorry, um, Ranong, Phuket, Aceh, uh, uh, connection, connectivity. So that is what we want to connect uh, between um, Thailand uh, and, and, uh, and Phuket uh, and to, to, to Aceh. Uh, that is um, um, uh, the EC5. Uh, we have also the EC4, uh, the uh, connecting the um, Strait of Malacca. Uh, that is, EC, uh, EC, sorry, EC2. And we have also... Um, uh, is C3, uh, that is the toll road, you know, from Aceh up to um, uh, Lampung province, you know, uh, Sumatra toll road, uh, Banda Aceh, Medan, Pekanbaru, Palembang, corridor, yeah, is C3. So currently uh, 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 in place. And we have also the EC4 connecting uh, Melaka Dumai. Uh, so you can see that uh, um, we will connect uh, all the regions, you know, uh, 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 by coming years. So one of them is uh, Dumai Malacca. Uh, no, the, currently the ongoing project is Proro Dumai Malacca, supposed to be completed by this year, uh, end of this year. But I got the information from the ground. Uh, it, could, it could not be possible to conclude the uh, Roro Dumai Malacca by this year uh, due to the. Uh, 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 economic Corridor 6 uh, to connect Patani, Yala, Naratiwat, uh, Perak, Kelantan, and Eastern Provinces in Sumatra, southern, uh, southern uh, part of Sumatra. So there is the EC uh, um, Economic Corridors uh, in MTGT. So, okay. Um, so now, okay, next. Uh, there is um, 
I discussed um, extensively several times. We had several time meeting with uh, the chair of the UNINET at the moment. So Siakwala University is uh, the uh, um, the chair of UNINET. Uh, but is it is very um, uh, involved in these matters. So uh, we have now around 25 universities, uh, members of UNINET in Indonesia, in Indonesia starting from uh, Siakwala University. Uh, uh, the new one uh, joined is University Technology Sumatra or ITERA uh, in Lampung. And we have also some universities in, in Peninsula of Malaysia, um, starting from University Kebangsaan Malaysia, uh, UUM, UTEM, and uh, uh, UITM as well. And uh, we have also in, in, in Thailand, uh, Prince Songkla University, Taksin University, in Wailala University. So totally all together around 25 universities um, um, uh, with more than 26 uh, total campus and, and, and 30,000, more than 36,000 uh, lecturers and uh, more than 600 uh, total students. So we are uh, MTGT very potential in terms of the human resources. Okay. So uh, what do we have in terms of the program in UNINET? So if you are looking here, um, uh, UNINET program 2019 up 2021. So uh, what number one is we have MTGT super proof project. So actually the super proof project, um, uh, we developed first in Palace, in Chuping Valley in Palace, in, uh, in Palace a state in Malaysia. And then uh, the project uh, extended to uh, to Sumatra, uh, first uh, in Shiakwala University. If you can see there, uh, that is the uh, the top right top of the fixed uh, plants. You know, it it was the picture taken uh, from Shiakwala University when I visited Shiakwala last time together with Pa Izir and also Pa Rector. So uh, the project is quite good. And uh, now the SIG University already join, uh, joined as well to, uh, uh, to have the super project uh, in Sumatra. So hopefully uh, under the chairmanship of Siakwala University, uh, we can further uh, develop this project, super project, yeah. And then uh, we have also uh, another summer camp and youth competition 2019. Uh, there is another program of UNINET and then innovative competition on smart farming. And then we have also internship and visiting researchers program at CMT office. So for your information, uh, just a few months ago, so uh, four students from uh, Shiakwala University also did uh, the uh, internship program uh, in CMT office in Putrajaya, Malaysia. So we do hope that uh, our door is still open. We are also inviting another student to join or to conduct the internship uh, program uh, in our office um, uh, in Putrajaya. Another, another program is 10 million lead bulb campaign for ASEAN. Uh, this is also a very important project under the UNINA program. And then joint conference on bioscience. Uh, this is also uh, um, uh, a good activities of the student, and then join conference on ICNC uh, MSA, uh, and then MTGT UNINET STEM. Uh, this is also a very good competition, very good uh, program under UNINET, and uh, and also lastly uh, MTGT Varsity Carnival. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the last activities uh, took place in Wailala University. And uh, University of Suak, uh, Siakwala is supposed to be the host for this year. Uh, and due to the COVID-19, what is there taught me uh, it must be postponed uh, to uh, the next year, inshallah. So that is the uh, uh, MTGT under the program of uh, UNINET. Next. Um, the impact of the COVID-19 to the economic growth in MTGT member countries. So uh, I don't want to repeat again uh, because the previous speaker already explained very detail. Uh, and also Ibu Yati from Indonesia, uh, what the case of Indonesia. 
and also uh, Prof. Krasakti uh, also explained uh, about the case in, in Thailand. What we can notice here, so the all countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, we are suffering indeed from the COVID-19, uh, not only in terms of the um, uh, trade and investment, but also almost all sectors, all sectors are suffering um, uh, because of COVID-19. Um, so it, uh, we are still into, uh, in the year 2020 at the moment. So the expert predicted already uh, our economic growth will be negative um, in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. And also uh, Thailand also uh, suffered a lot here uh, due to the Thailand um, uh, tourism industry contribute a lot to the GDP of Thailand. So, uh, but what uh, the good news as well here I would like also to congratulate our member countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand, especially Thailand at the moment. I checked by today, uh, the total case is uh, all together is 3,523, and only one, uh, one case, you know, uh, that is also outstanding uh, achievement. Uh, and also in Malaysia, the total around 10,909, and a plus a uh, new case 150 uh, and Indonesia still still big numbers so uh, it is uh, we understand that Indonesia um, uh, huge population uh, more than almost 300 to 160 million people and also uh, huge areas so the the magnitude and also the the level of difficulty also will not be the same but each of the country Indonesia Malaysia and Thailand uh, the government already uh, 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 did the um, the most um, what they can do uh, to offer, to overcome the COVID-19. Uh, we can notice as well here um, the impact uh, of the uh, COVID-19 to our the uh, un unemployment uh, rate in each of the country. Um, Indonesia, take for example. I say that maybe almost two million uh, 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 increase in unemployment, uh, unemployment uh, will be laid off of the workers, and Malaysia unemployment rate uh, escalated to uh, five point three percent. That is May twenty twenty, and also Thailand, uh, as mentioned, uh, touched upon as well a bit by uh, Prof. Uh, just now. Um, uh, unemployment uh, will reach uh, will increase by 10 percent at the end of the year. So we can understand, you know, how severe the COVID-19 uh, to our economy. Uh, that, uh, but one thing that we have to uh, uh, to emphasize: um, there is no country can uh, be able to solve this problem alone. Uh, instead, we have to strengthen our collaboration. So regional, international, multilateral cooperation is very important to, to, uh, to, to overcome this uh, pandemic. So we have to hand, join hand all together under this difficult time. Okay, the next. Uh, uh, we notice here at the Secretariat of NTGT, um, the three countries uh, already uh, uh, took initiative you know to overcome the pandemic as I mentioned earlier uh, whether it is uh, in terms of the fiscal stimulus packages or monetary policy so you can see here uh, in terms of the uh, Indonesia Malaysia Thailand in terms of the overall fiscal measures so the three countries <laughs> are the same like the, uh, that initiative and then uh, and also the uh, health system measures so how the uh, mitigation measures, you know, to to, com to combat this um, COVID-19. So it is already taken by three countries. And also uh, income support measures uh, for individual and also household, also taken by three countries, Indonesia, Malaysia. So all the same. And then uh, tax and contribution policy, uh, and also uh, taken by three countries. And um, uh, and then several tax and social security contribution uh, are also the same, uh, taken by the three countries. 
and monetary policy, uh, this is also the same. Uh, basically, uh, what we are going to encourage uh, under the MTGT uh, cooperation is the important for us to strengthen uh, collaboration under this difficult time. So uh, you can see in, in our screen at the moment, uh, maybe the, the policy, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the technical policy in each of the country may be different, but the, each country can be learn in others from best practice and also experience. That is the most important for, uh, for us is uh, under the sub-regional cooperation. Uh, okay, um, the next, okay. So um, MTGT respond to the COVID-19. So uh, in terms of the uh, sub-regional cooperation, uh, so uh, what, what uh, our response uh, to the COVID-19? So number one is uh, we, we promote the, um, the activities related to strengthening MTGT cooperation on COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, we conducted uh, so many activities, a workshop, seminar, uh, a change of information, uh, not only, in, not only uh, between the member state, uh, but also with the international uh, regional organization. And then uh, CMT office is a secretariat of MTGT also conducted six series of webinar uh, with the title managing the impact of the COVID-19 on the MTGT cooperation. That is, uh, thank you as, as well uh, to uh, uh, union members, including Siakwala University. Um, um, UNINET already participated very well uh, uh, in our uh, activities, CMT activities, including in webinars. And we have also um, conducted um, a working group meeting, a sub working group meeting, uh, and also convergent meeting between working group and sub working group. And we are also uh, uh, soon to have the senior official meeting and ministerial meeting. And then for your information for this year under the COVID-19, so Indonesia will be the host uh, for the ministerial meeting coming in November. So, uh, perhaps uh, end of uh, November. Uh, the date is still uh, yet confirmed by Indonesia in this regard. So, so that's why even though we are difficult time, but the show must go on. So all working group, sub working group still have conducting the meeting. And then uh, beside we have also the collaboration with international organization, as I mentioned earlier. So, um, uh, for instance, with Islamic Development Bank. So this year we are supposed to have two training program, a capacity building to be conducted by uh, with the Islamic Development Bank. However, due to the COVID-19, there is no option for us. We have to uh, postpone it until next year, or we have to find out another ways um, online training program. This is under um, under under um, what we call it. Um, um, uh, work under uh, by the concerns um, uh, our partners. And also uh, we collaborate also with IGIS, uh, CCT in Japan, uh, especially for um, uh, COVID-19 waste management and also for solid waste management. And uh, just last week, uh, we had also very productive meeting, very good meeting with UNSCAP in Bangkok. Uh, so we are going to discuss uh, to have also a joint project so uh, related to the uh, waste management uh, and also green cities uh, related to uh, sustainable urban uh, development framework. So that is the uh, our response, you know, MTGT response uh, to the COVID-19. So hopefully uh, by collaborating with international organization, uh, we can make something for the benefit of our people in the three uh, region, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. Okay, uh, the next, uh, what is the way forward? The way forward is number one, strengthening sub-regional cooperation to mitigate the impact of COVID-19. Uh, for instance, by conducting a change of information and best practice. So that is what I mentioned earlier. During this difficult time, we should 
to strengthen collaboration uh, 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 sub-regionally or regionally or internationally. Uh, as we believe, uh, this pandemic could not be solved alone by one country, but we have to strengthen our collaboration. And number two, to develop MTGT e-commerce platform to assist SMEs. If we are looking at uh, our main constituent industry region, um, not more than 90% of private sectors in MTGT uh, sub-region are SMEs. So they are suffering a lot because the pandemic. So that is the difference when we have the recession or uh, uh, the crisis in 1997, uh, uh, 98 uh, before. Um, uh, in the past, SM is still uh, um, or less uh, uh, what you call it, impacted by, uh, by um, the financial crisis. But nowadays, SMEs, our SMEs, uh, they are all suffering because of the COVID-19, uh, because of the uh, people uh, movement restriction, uh, because of transportation, uh, because of the lockdown. So as mentioned by our expert, by Prof. and also Buyati just now, uh, there are so many uh, another uh, and, uh, consequences because of the COVID-19. During the discussion uh, in our in MTGT uh, last time, uh, the best solution for us at the moment under the COVID-19 uh, is to develop the e-commerce. Uh, so mentioned as well uh, uh, by previous speakers, uh, according to data shown by our previous speakers, the e-commerce activities also increased uh, sharply in, in, in each of uh, MTGT countries. However, in MTGT uh, sub-region, uh, we, we haven't yet the platform for the e-commerce. So that's why um, uh, e-commerce, MTGT e-commerce platform, uh, perhaps uh, the answer uh, to, uh, to, our, uh, to, uh, to the COVID-19. And uh, uh, when we be able to develop this in the sub-region, I believe that our SMBs uh, can be more resilient in the future. So we have to develop this one and hopefully uh, the our working group, uh, we are so committed uh, to finalize this this platform uh, by this year, and hopefully uh, during the summit of MTGG summit next year, uh, normally uh, in April or May, we can launch uh, the MTGT e-commerce platform, and that is our target. And then Pak the Firdaus, travel bubble. Uh, Pak Firdaus, the time is up. Maybe you can fast. Oh, okay. So I will, this only uh, almost finished, Pa. Uh, travel bubble. Uh, this is recommended by uh, Ministry of uh, by uh, Working Group Tourism. So uh, I think that this is also one of the solution later on, uh, but still uh, uh, to keep uh, or to other the health protocol. Uh, so our working group will discuss about the travel bubble, and then promoting capacity building program. Uh, this is also our target. Uh, we are going to do that uh, uh, in collaboration with member state in also with international uh, organization. And then uh, last but, uh, but not least is develop halal blockchains. Uh, so uh, because um, uh, halal cooperation is one of the pillar cooperation in MTGT. So uh, basically by the year, uh, this is uh, uh, my presentation and I'm very pleased to have if any um, question from the floor. Thank you very much, Paizir. Okay, thank you, Pak Firdaus, for very interesting presentation. Uh, last but not least, that what he what we have already mentioned. And the first question coming from uh, Admira Rifani, uh, he would ask a question. What will MTGT do in order to handle COVID-19 effect or managing the impact? Is there any changes with the goal on 2036? Okay, please, pa. Thank you very much, Pa. Is it? Thank you for the very, very good question in this regard. So, of course, the, uh, the vision of MTGT will remain uh, until 2036. But what we have to do, Pa, uh, is only our activities, our target. So um, 
beside the long term uh, vision, we have also the short term uh, planning, uh, the five years. So the first five years will be uh, until 2021. So that's why the our working group, sub working group, now they are so busy to, dig, to discuss, to adjust the program because the pandemic. Uh, so many programs couldn't be uh, implemented. So, of course, uh, in the short term, there are so many uh, 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 acti our activities must be postponed uh, to the next year. But our vision still remain there uh, because still uh, a long way to go. Thank you very much for the questions. Okay, thank you very much, um, Pa Firdaus. Uh, please give big applause also to the last speakers. Thank you so much. Kap -kap. Okay, thank you. Now uh, we have already listened to very interesting insight about the COVID-19 and its impact on economic growth and also on social economic aspects. Uh, furthermore, we also learned that using big data analytics, especially from Buyati, can help us to understand global impacts and also domestic impacts of COVID-19. She already mentioned regarding how to use uh, big data or data science. We know that in this difficult time, we do hope that government to take health issue as the top priority, as mentioned by Professor Firasakdi, in order to prevent further impact of COVID-19. And we hope life will get back to normal soon. We know that for the society or untuk masyarakat, we heard the 3M. 3M in Indonesia, akan kirasak memakai masker, mask wearing, mencuci tangan, hand washing, menjaga jarak, physical distancing. That is for the society or public or untuk masyarakat. But for pemerintah, for government, the government should do three T, testing, tracing, and treatment. I think, thank you very much for your attention. And please forgive me for some inconvenience during this seminar. And I closing by Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon again. And now the floor to the committee. Please, maybe you give the winners a dog prize, please. The committee, please. But Lily, maybe the committee can. Who, okay, MC? who will uh, lead all we, we should the... have also photo session together and then door press already mentioned here five yeah five door press already and photo session Eka, but... where are you thank you mr hizir and thank you so much for all the amazing speakers hope we can always learn and good get a good learning from today's webinar and ladies and gentlemen, to enliven this event, we will give door prize to lucky to five lucky questioners. Here's the name. It's Nurma Yunda from Syah Kola and Tengku Samsul Bahri and Sir Saiful Mahdi from Syah Kola. And, so, and Fahmi from Polytechnic. Congratulations for all the winners. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the last agenda has closed our international webinar today. We are so happy to welcoming all of you and hope we can meet again on another event. We apologize for our mistakes and thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Don't forget take picture. Take picture first.
Eka. Han, siapa yang ngambil foto Farhan? Oke, okay. okay, thank you very much. Panjang Buka zoomnya dulu, suruh buka yeah. zoom, Pak. And Pak Jum. Jum. terima kasih ya. Kriwan. Bu Yati should leave us. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Bu Yati should leave earlier uh, because she has uh, another meeting. But thank you very much, Ajan Firasak. Yeah, still here bye -bye. till now, and Pak Firdaus also. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Baik Pak. Okay. Untuk sesi uh, photo shoot akan kita laksanakan. Okay, please. Okay, now we will take some picture. Three, two, one. Okay, another one. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Pak Izzy. Thank you. Thank you. Pak Firdaus semuanya, Bu Lili, Farhan, oh, Panitia semuanya. Ya, yeah, thank you very much. Terima kasih. Terima kasih banyak. Ya, terima kasih banyak-banyak ya. Kita akhiri. Wabillahi taufiq dahya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Sukses, Pak. Thank you very much, sir. Sukses, ya. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, Bu Lili. Terima kasih.